Hi, welcome to the SciGen video series. Today we're going to be talking about virtualization. Uh, today's video session is a virtualization 101. So if you're new to virtualization, we're going to cover some of the basics and talk about why you might want to virtualize and some of the benefits of using this type of technology. So the first question is, uh, virtualization, what is it? Uh, somewhat simply put, uh, virtualization is the ability to run multiple operating systems on one physical piece of hardware. So let's, let's take a look at that and see what that looks like. Uh, traditionally, uh, if someone has more than one server, they'll have uh, multiple physical boxes uh, in their environment. So each of these boxes here represent a physical server. And each of these servers is running an operating system. Now, when someone virtualizes, what they do is they take these physical boxes, each running a different operating system, and they may place them on one box. So, for example, here is my physical environment, and here is my virtual environment. So on the left, we have three physical boxes, each running their own uh, separate operating system. And on the right, we have one physical box, uh, but it's running three different operating systems. So how is this done? Is, in this scenario, the, the operating system or the server is actually a file. So each of these individual operating systems, they exist simply as a collection of files. There may be a file that has a configuration, and then a file for perhaps each of the individual hard drives. Maybe a C drive and a D drive as files. And now that these uh, systems or servers are set up as files, it makes it very easy to move them around. And we'll talk a little bit more about that later. So now let's dive into why are people using virtualization? What are some of the benefits? Why do I want to consider this technology? Why am I reading more and more about it in the media? Well, the first uh, initial reason people virtualize is for cost savings and for resource utilization. So let's take a look at that and see what it looks like. Um, in this example, each of these physical servers, perhaps each of them cost me $5,000. So total, my total physical hardware cost is $15,000. Um, but in this scenario, uh, maybe this server isn't $5,000, maybe it's, maybe it's $8,000. Uh, but my cost savings, I've got almost a 50% reduction in cost. So that's the first reason people virtualize. Um, additionally, what people oftentimes find uh, is that systems aren't partitioned onto separate servers because of resource constraints. Uh, they're often partitioned off because of inca incompatibility. For example, uh, this system may need to run a, a Linux application. This one may need to run Windows. This one may need to run Windows, but this application that's installed is incompatible with an application that's installed over here, so I need to have separate operating system instances. Uh, but if I look at my resource utilization, I may see 5% uh, CPU, 10% CPU, 5% CPU. So my physical resources aren't my bottleneck, it's just that I've got these incompatibilities. But by virtualizing, what I can do is I can come over here and see, well, all of my uh, operating systems are in separate files. They're all isolated, so I can run them all now since I'm virtualized. But maybe my resources now, I'm getting 25% uh, utilization uh, out of my physical hardware. Another interesting thing about resource utilization with virtualization is you can actually achieve uh, better memory management by uh, virtualizing. And why is that? Well, if you think about an operating system, uh, there are some, when, you, when you boot up, there are some certain pieces of memory that are used identically across an operating system. So what may happen is this slice of memory uh, would be used, but what the virtualization software does is that it says, you know what, these pieces of memory are the same, I'm just going to create a pointer, and uh, we'll just use uh, you know, one piece of, of memory, physical piece of memory on this system. Uh, it makes it much easier to get better uh, resource utilization out of physical hardware. So the next reason people virtualize is for management. 
uh, what people find is that virtual machines are actually easier to manage than physical machines. And uh, the two biggest reasons are it's easier to allocate resources and it's actually easier to provision new machines. So let's take a look at why. Uh, as we said earlier, virtual machines exist simply as files. So uh, my server could exist as file A for my config and disk 1 and disk 2 dot file. And now that my system exists as a file, as I, if I have a, a physical piece of hardware that fails or I need to do maintenance on a piece of equipment, it's very easy to just simply copy and paste these files to another physical resource. Okay. Provisioning. Uh, many people have used different provisioning techniques over the years, such as imaging techniques to deploy images. Um, virtualization makes that process even easier. Typically what happens is uh, a virtual machine is set up and it's called a template. This may be your base operating system. So when someone needs a new system, you don't have to go through the process of uh, getting out your, your, your Windows disk or your Linux disk and reinstalling the operating system. Simply you've already set up your template and then software allows you to right click, say deploy, and you create a new server instance uh, usually within minutes. The third major reason people virtualize is for availability and disaster recovery. So let's talk about that a little bit. First off, we talked a few minutes ago about that virtual machines exist as files. And if they exist as files, it makes it very easy uh, to move files. So if I've got one virtual server here, a second virtual server over here, um, I've got my file here, perhaps something happens here, I need to do maintenance, I need to move the box, all I need to do is copy and paste my file onto this other box, and uh, I'm, I'm up and running. Secondly, when people use this with disaster recovery, what they've, what they've been able to do now is, uh, previously you'd have to have uh, like-for-like -like hardware oftentimes if you wanted to have disaster recovery. This hardware had to match this. Well, virtualization breaks the hardware dependence link. So this could be my new hardware in my production facility, and this could be perhaps my old hardware at my DR site. So instead of getting rid of this hardware, I virtualize all of it. I send my new production data here, and I have an old hardware that could take the virtual machines over here. Or people are leaving this unvirtualized and then just virtualizing at their DR site. Uh, some specific virtualization packages allow you to do uh, migration of virtual machines hot while they're running from one physical piece of hardware to another. So for example, if I've got two virtual machines that share common storage and uh, something happens or I need to move that machine instead of shutting the operating system down, what it allows me to do is actually move the machine while it's running and users don't know the difference. Uh, this is extremely cost effective when compared with clustering. In a clustering example, uh, you would still have the shared disk, but let's say I had three servers that I wanted to cluster. I would need a total of six physical boxes. But if I virtualize, instead of having six boxes that are clustered, I can have two and get cluster-like availability. If you'd like to know more about virtualization, you can give us a call at 330-668-1660. Thanks.